Ooh, what's up everyone? Of course, welcome to my team analysis for, well, Mount Moon Battle Association. And uh, yeah, if you guys haven't been following me, you know that with 2 be soon to be over, I really need a new league and I actually left LBA for, well, till Sun and Moon is out, which means I needed a new league or rather I was looking for a league that were in some fashion like the UCL with the tier base instead of the uh, ranks and stuff like that. I kind of felt that that kind of concept has been tiring me out somewhat. So I felt that free drafting and, you know, ranks are something I've done to death. And I really want to make a league or try a league where tier is in the focus. And uh, yeah, with all that said, uh, Mount Moon was just was a, what I was looking for. And here are my team analysis for, well, the Mount Moon Battle Association. So my draft in OU were actually quite impressive. I started off as a first pick, and since Mega Metagross is usually banned in, well, every league I've been at, it was fun to actually have the chance to use it, and obviously I've drafted it, together with a Sumeril, who is a very, very good fairy in general, and uh, Latias, because Latias has Defog. So I needed a good Defog to start the bat. And yeah, this might actually be the most powerful OU picks I've done ever in a league, to be honest. And um, like I said, their Mega Metagross tend to be banned. And it kind of perplexes me at the same thing, I kind of get it. Because it is a very, very powerful mod, but at the same time it's kind of speedy, naturally bulky, and it has a lot of things going for it. And I do believe that's mostly due to its, well, pretty much legendary stats, really. And of course, with a pretty broad move pool, it, it, it is a devastator in its finest. And, um, well, I never used a Sumerian in League format, but I've seen it work really, really well. And uh, you always want to have that uh, Fairy Steel Dragon Core. And if you can't get it in OU, or obviously for this League, this OU would be the primary <laughs> tier to get it, then uh, they are awesome. It, there are very few things that will work in my disadvantage. I think that is the most important part. Um, and just in general, like, this draft couldn't be much more powerful. Uh, but there are a few things here that I always have to watch out for. Drafting a, f a very, very high core, high pressure will mean that a lot of defensive players could use their disadvantage their, their, their because my only setup with these guys are, of course, a Sumerail. And it's <clears throat> not as easy to pull up belly drama as people might think but yeah with that said this is the OU draft and now let's see what I got for you you so in you round I actually got the chance to be fourth to pick so still very 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 high and my first pick was mammoth wine for obvious reasons mammoth wine like yes mammoth wine is one of the best you you mods ever I think it goes so far it's probably one of the most powerful in a league format actually, way way over some OU due to the stabs. But I rarely got the chance to get it, so this was definitely the first time I had a primary chance to get it. And the thing was I was so surprised that Entei survived a roundabout. Uh, Entei also extremely powerful, extremely evil if you can't deal with it, with Sacred Fire and whatnot. And very bulky while not fire being the most impressive type in defensively. It still it has a presence, and like I said, Sacred Fire, definitely up there, definitely up there. And for the last pick, uh, I went with Heracross. I was thinking about Galvantula, because it still was available and didn't have electric typing. And electric type was getting scarce fast, like electric type were definitely disappearing. But the thing is here, if I put Galvantula, that would have meant that sure I got a few resistances, but I also would sustain myself a lot to earthquakes, and I don't really want to build a massive ground weakness early. Uh, I do believe Meta Megros and Entei kinda ensures that earthquake is gonna be a thing for me, even though I have an immunity mind. Having that said, it was really, really good to get here across. It wasn't even a fighting mon, and it's not like fighting mon was gonna be, be a lot better. Further down as we go, having a powerful stab uh, Bugmon with fighting typing would solve the psychic issues that this team could be facing. But just in general, Maya, or Maya, Metagross, I was gonna say, but Heracross is uh, extremely dangerous this kind of format. So, yeah, nothing to it. Let's see what I got for RU. 
So in RU I do believe I went fourth and I'm actually pretty darn glad with the team I got here. Now I started with Tangrowth, yeah, I did get sniped with Drapion which is unfortunate but it's not the end of the world because it pretty much meant that alright it's time to patch things. And Jellicent was the one that I followed up with and it was basically Jellicent is one of those mods that can ensure that the monster can set up Calm Mind Skulls, for example the Sukun is not an issue. Jellicent is very good at dealing with other water mods, which is something you kind of want. And uh, the ghost typing makes it a bit harder to, of course, get rapid spin against it. And has access to Will O Wisp. And like I said, recover. Like, recover is definitely up there, one of those moves that are important. And we get finally some bulk to this massive open. So, Tangerooft and Jellicent definitely worked well together. And then I picked Rhyperior. I was pretty much sure whether I should pick Rhyperior or. I had other money in mind, which I didn't pick, obviously. I was gonna pick Rhydon instead in NU. But Rhyperior is kinda nice. Kinda nice. Um, a lot of power in that mod. Now we have two ground stat, which usually means that, alright, we're pretty much weak to water and uh, grass typing for sure this time around. But then again, I picked a mod that could help it out. And Rhyperior as a standalone Pokemon is a good stealth rocker, it's a good bulk, so even if it's super effectively. It can punish you back. And uh, yeah, I, I like Rhyperior. Uh, one of those really, really dangerous rock polish mods, too. And of course, with the stab of rock and um, ground, there are really not too many things I want to command on this freely. And with 130 base attack, it's gonna hurt to try to fend this guy off on a switch in. You have to free switch against it. And even so, you have to hope to God I don't have a switch in. So yeah, with this pretty much complete team as it is, the NU picks was kinda... Eh, I didn't really need them. Um, it felt like just filler for me, but actually, first pick was... I actually got winning first this time, which means I got at least the mana I wanted. Now, I needed a grounded poison type due to Drapion being picked. Um, I was considering Weezing first because it brings some resistances and of course immunity. But it is not grounded, and if it's not grounded, that means that people can set up toxic spikes against me. And it's not like I want Latias to have defog every battle. One, sure, but not every. Not if I don't need it, and definitely I don't want to deal or care about toxic spikes. So a grounded poison type, Garbodor, or you solve that, and of course it has spikes and toxic spikes itself. Combined with actually a pretty decent bulk. So Garbodor is good, it's really good. And then we came down to, you know, what do I need more? I need a dark typing, I need a normal typing, I need an uh, electric typing. Obviously, I'm not solving that. I I'm definitely not solving that. Uh, but my electric typing went eventually to Manetric for Lightning Rod. But with that said, I was considering Zebstrika, I was considering Raichu. Raichu, nasty plot and 110 base speed is great. Zebstrika, not as powerful, but has the fire hits and it has of course the likes of Sap Zipper and Lightning Rock. So two immunities in his favor, which is great. A 116 speed, yeah, nice. But it all came down to that. Sadly, I should say, Manetric is the more powerful turn one than day, day two are. Even though the thing is when when you pick an NU Lightning Mon or Electric Mon, you kind of have to solve one big deal directly and that is if it's not powerful to stay in or not defensively to stay in as some might be then you have to pretty much ensure at least it's powerful enough to hit something hard so manager was 105 um, special attack and 105 speed it's quite respectable flamethrower awesome overheat awesome switcheroo specs yes there are a lot of things going with manetric which makes it primary my primary choice like I said, I was debating, you know, where do I go from this, what do I take, but yeah, uh, that, that was pretty much my mindset, and that was the easier one. Now, for my last pick, I actually wanted Kangaskhan, I, I will say that, but it's not because Kangaskhan is better than Tauros, it's definitely the opposite. The thing was, I did not think Tauros would survive to the last round, so with that in mind, I got Tauros. Uh, Kangaskhan, like I said, there got sniped, and it's unfortunate because I wanted to showcase how good Kangaskhan can be in this format. Because I'd never seen it in this format, so, um, you know, I tried to prove a point, obviously that didn't pan out. Now we have instead Tauros, which already proven to be a massive 
deal breaker for a lot of mods. Toro's 110 base speed is just saying shit your pants buddy. Uh, it's really good and rock climb, share force, intimidate, great moves and of course it's really really weird. Um, <laughs> stab, uh, not stab, which Sear Force, a Life Orb, and of course a like of elemental moves while not having the most impressive special attack of 40, that's pretty darn bad, but the damage output of an extra 60% without residual damage, you will ensure that this guy can fend off whatever he's gonna have to deal with. So I like Tauros, I think it's a great mon actually, he just I didn't really want it here, uh, because it just made my team too powerful, with that said, I'm <laughs> a pretty powerful team. Because this is like easily the strongest draft I ever got. And this is the complete team, guys. And I don't really know how to um, how to explain this team outside of, like I said, overpowered. I do think there are very, very few that have a good chance against me. And I don't mean that to sound like a very, very, very mean or anything like that. It just, this team is hard to prep for. Because with 12 mons each battle, um, they're gonna be tough to decide which 6 mons are gonna be able to deal with whatever they are facing. Because this is a team that does stand tall. Very, very tall, I say. And um, yeah, Mega Metagross, I'm really looking forward to see how that one works. Because I'm feeling it could be what people are saying that it is too powerful for League format. But then again, I've seen Lando I in the league format, so uh, I don't know. People might just making a big deal out of nothing. But uh, as a UCL team, or um, sorry, UCL format team, this team is pretty darn scary, and there are a lot of things going for it here. Uh, I'm trying to look, you know, what could be or go up against me that could win, but even stall, like stall, stall, will have issues due to a few of my mods being able to not only set up but they can actually force down so many mon so easily and uh, yeah I, I don't know how you would be able to contribute that team without actually risking anything and uh, yeah with that said uh, <laughs> I can't really fail with anything I really like this team as a, as a Pokemon player uh, I will say that this is definitely a better team than most of my regular drafts go when it comes to free drafting this is this team has everything for everything. Uh, I don't see a factor where, like I said, another mon could easily wall this team out. Because even with you know, ice stab will probably be the ideal thing here that could work against me or free strike in general. Uh, but uh, even so, I do have the mon to fend that up, which is something that. Uh, I rarely find a team, so I have myself rather impressed that the team got the way it did, and um, yeah, uh, uh, that's really all I can say. I'm I'm feeling confident here. I really, really think that we have a good thing going, and uh, I'm looking forward to this season of the Mount Moon Battle Association. So I hope you guys are too, because we are playing as Scandinavian Stavlins, not Gothenburg Archamp, and. The team emblem is gonna be fixed during this week, I assure you. So the Scandinavian Stoutland emblem is gonna be patched up. Hope you guys are looking forward to that. And the first battle should go up hopefully next week. So with all that said, guys, I want to thank you as always for watching. And I see you in the next video. Until then, take care.